organized crime is, is, is pretty organized. People don't understand. Mafia in this country existed for well over a hundred years. Stop running, you fat slime ball. Is this realistic? Ah, when we went after somebody, we shoot them. That's it. You know, the big problem with, with the mob back in that day is they didn't keep up with the technology. You know, the FBI, you know, and all law enforcement agencies were ahead of us back then. But it's all drugs, Sonny. None of the families will touch that <laughs> That's true. A lot of controversy over drugs. Younger guys wanted to get into it. The older guys said, no, dirty business. But there was a lot of controversy. And I believe after the mid 80s, that's when people started to deal drugs a little bit more. It's too much money involved. But we're in my era. You die for it. But it's pretty realistic here. Here's the deal. They want a straight exchange on open ground. All right. OK, stay tight. Let's go. You know, part of the problem in the drug business, there's so many informants, so many rats. It's just so hard. You don't know who to trust. It's it's one of the dirtiest businesses out there. And that's why we were leery of it, too. You know, plus you get a lot of time for drugs. Got it? 100% pure grade A Colombian, my friend. Let me see it. Every Colombian I met in prison during my time, they were all drug dealers. Every one of them. I get it. You know, look at the business. A lot of money involved, but uh, tough business. You know, there was a thought at the time when the cell phones first came out that you couldn't tap. And we were wrong about that. Our information, our intel was wrong because you could obviously tap a cell phone and a lot of guys got in trouble for it. But it brings me back. I remember those old Motorola phones that were so big. We had them in the cars also. Everybody started using them. Too much chatter on the phone. This is a conversation that should never have taken place over the telephone. Hey, doing time for the family is no piece of cake, but the family looks after its own, okay? That's not true. You go to prison, the family's not looking out after you. Trust me on that. You know, if you don't have any money, you're in trouble. Nobody's throwing money at you when you're in prison. The only money that you get is the money that you had on the street. And maybe they'll take care of business for you until it runs out. And I know that firsthand. Because my dad, uh, you know, got a 50-year prison sentence. And when his money ran out, it ran out. Part of the reasons I got involved in the life. You know, I'm not saying guys wouldn't make a mistake and have this kind of conversation on the phone. How many guys were caught on wiretaps? You know, so many. You know, the big problem with, with the mob back in that day is they didn't keep up with the technology. You know, the FBI, you know, and all law enforcement agencies were ahead of us back then. I mean, they even had surveillance uh, devices, you know, in phone booths, in parking meters. They had it everywhere. And we didn't realize it. We used to go out and talk by a parking meter, and we didn't realize it was bugged. They also had some kind of device where they could have pointed something at you from, you know, several hundred feet away, and they could have picked up the conversation. So many guys went down because of conversations like this. Mercedes? You try living with it. Anyway, let me point out some of our more distinguished guests. That's our Congressman Alex Shrub with rising silicone star. I can tell you what, not surprised politicians are involved in this. They love you know, guys with money, guys with influence, guys with powers. They didn't care what you were dealing with at that time. And the chatty trio, that sleeping sweat gland is Papa's right hand gimp, Gonzalez. And the other two are Pastor Richards and pseudo-intellectual film director Steve Scott. Well, listen, not unrealistic at all. We had a lot of celebrities, a lot of politicians around us. You know, the money, the power, the influence. So this is certainly uh, realistic in that regard. Oh, I thought that you were taking care of this. I really did. And now those guidos say we got to do them a favor. You mean I got to do them a favor? Oh, of course that's what I mean. Do I look like I can intimidate a jury? Jury tampering. Well, so many of us went on trial. Anytime we can get to a juror, one of the advantages that we had in New York is that there were so many of us. There were 750 made guys, and we had a lot of associates. So whenever there was a jury trial, we would try to see if maybe one of our friends, our relatives, somebody we knew, even our neighbors, had any contact with a juror, a potential juror. And of course, if we can get just one juror, one juror, that's all we need, you know, to get a hung jury if it was going the wrong way. We were always on the lookout for that, no doubt. You know, normally you wouldn't want to intimidate a juror. You'd want to get them on your side. You want to pay them off. You know, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. So you try to pay, pay off a juror if you can. And it happened in a Gotti trial. Sammy Gravano, you know, copped to that, you know, that he reached out to a juror, was paying him. It happens, believe me, more than you might think. For this kindness, I'll reward you. And then, 
We will find your money together. It will be at ease. Guaranteed either of these two men didn't trust each other. And, uh, you know, but when there was a setup like that, you'd go the distance to find out who did it and to retaliate, no doubt. I'm gonna shut that big mouth of yours. Uh, he's got a blade. Stop running, you fat slime ball. Is this realistic? Ah, when we went after somebody, we shoot him. That's it. You know, do you torture a guy? On a few occasions, there were some guys in our life that, you know, just got a charge out of that. Uh, but most of the time, you, you just do it quick. Do it quick and get out. You must be called Tessa's new gun. Till more gainful opportunities arise. They'll be here any minute. We both better get a good vantage point. Okay. I'll take the balcony, you get the roof across the yard. One of the reasons why you wouldn't deal with Colombians or drug dealers, you couldn't trust any of them. I say no to that, man. You know, this is one of the reasons why we didn't get involved in the drug business. There was so much treachery, so much backstabbing. You know, they played by different rules than we did. You know, the guys that were dealing drugs, you know, the guys from South America, even from Mexico. We didn't trust them. It was just a tough business to get involved in. Fools! Fool! Fool! Tommy! What, Ricardo? These idiots, they're always trying to screw you. That's the problem with this business. What do you think you're doing? A lot of hot-headed guys. None of them last. Everybody I know that was a hothead like this, they don't last. They either get killed, they end up in jail. Can't be like that. The thinking mafia? That gang place is a fortress at ground level. So Quentin here, Quentin, Quentin, he'll fly you over the area, eradicate them. You see, their, their plan what is to screw one know? another right from the start. What thing puzzling me? What's with Quentin? I don't know, I always kind of liked it. Quentin Bad, Bad. The unrealistic thing about this, they'd be attracting a lot of attention from law enforcement. Can't be doing shootouts in the street, making major deals like that. There's so many rats, so many informants in the drug business. This is uh, pretty far-fetched here. You wouldn't have these major battles. Like, I mean, these things did happen in Colombia. They did happen in Mexico. It don't happen here in the United States. Yeah, Scarface. <laughs> Scene from Scarface. One of the best scenes ever in a movie. Running up that stairway. Remember at the end, Pacino? Say hello to my little friend. Been saving for a rainy day. <laughs> you like? Yeah, I like. Now, you know, this could never happen in the United States. No way. Law enforcement would be all over this. There'd be formants out everywhere. They'd know exactly what's going on. You can't be just out in the open. You just can't do it. They won't allow it here. This is like the Wild West. You know, I myself was never ambushed by doing a job, but I know when other people were. Well, normally it was from the cops. You know, they knew, they had a tip, they knew something was happening. So yeah, it's realistic that you could be ambushed in a, in a situation like that. But most of the time it would be law enforcement. If there was a drug deal going down, it could be anybody at that point in time. Like I said, one of the reasons we stayed away from drugs was exactly what you saw in this uh, video. You couldn't trust anybody. They're a different culture. They work differently than we did. A lot of backstabbing. It just was a dirty, dirty business. Diaz! I've come to take over your business! Tommy! You betrayed me, you idiot! I'm gonna kill you real soon! Yeah. None of this would ever happen. Makes for a good game. I was pulling me in. I trusted you, Tommy! <laughs> well, you knew that Diaz had to die. No question about that. Say goodnight, Mr. Diaz. Had to end that way. Problem, fellas. Mike was supposed to torch some place in the mall, but he screwed the fuses, and now yeah, the cops are crawling all over it. We gotta get our stuff and get out of here. Relax, both of you. Let me think for a second. Tommy Versetti just doesn't cut and run. Listen, there's uh, oftentimes when there's a botched, you know, job or a heist or a hit, it happens more than you might think. But that takes time. We gotta go in and torch that place ourselves. Yeah, but no one but a cop could get within a mile of that place. So we go as cops. We gotta get uniforms, and we're gonna need a squad car. They don't plan much here. They think of things pretty much, you know, off the cuff. Damn you! They're just killing everybody. Like I said, it's like the Wild West here. You know, actually, you know, organized crime is, is, is pretty organized. 
People don't understand, mafia in this country existed for well over a hundred years under some very challenging conditions and they thrived and prospered. Why? Very organized, very disciplined, very structured. So a lot of the stuff that's happening here is kind of off the cuff and not a lot of planning. You know, and like I said, the feds would be all over this. You don't see this kind of stuff in the United States, maybe outside the States, but not here. Yeah, I do know of times when uh, guys dressed as cops and were able to get into a place as a result of that, so I'm realistic. You know, Tommy, I did what I could for you. I pulled strings, called in favors. I was your friend, Tommy. I hoped you'd see sense, see what's good for business. I trusted you, Tommy, and you disappointed me. But at least someone in your chicken <laughs> organization knows how to do business. Isn't that right, Lance? I'm sorry, Tommy. This is Vice City. This is business. Confrontations like this happen all the time, so it's part of the problem in that life. I sold you out, Tommy. I sold you out. The real cash is upstairs in the safe. Tough conversation right there. Man, you think I just take the fake cash, save face, and run away with my tail between my legs? No. I just want to <laughs> you off before I kill you. You tell somebody you're going to kill him, you do it on the spot. This is the last dance for a Can you imagine how the feds would be all over this? You know, in Cosa Nostra in this country, Mafia, you would never see shootouts like this. You picked the wrong side, Lance. You took 15 years from me, Sonny. And now I'm gonna make you pay! I mean, don't get me wrong, there was a lot of disputes, a lot of every day in that life, you're sitting down with somebody arguing over something, but rarely did they get resolved in, in a shootout. I mean, never in a shootout like that. Look, guys got killed all the time, but not like this. Tommy wins again. <laughs> you gonna kill him? No, they're friends. Oh my god, Tommy, what, what happened? That stupid prank, Lance. Tommy, I never liked that guy, okay? He's no He's like a one-man wrecking machine, it seems. He sauce every pup. Like a superhero. I don't think we're gonna be getting any more heat from up north either. The game is exciting, there's no question about it, but you know, for realism, you wouldn't see this kind of shootouts everywhere. Guys wouldn't be running around with machine guns going after people like that. And most of the time, you know, you wouldn't be dealing with uh, South American groups with the Colombians and the Mexicans. These are like drug wars, and they just don't happen in the United States. But you know, I was getting into the game. I mean, I saw it, I liked it in that regard. I just knew that uh, it's not something we would have been doing or well, even would be going on now, especially. But even back in my day, it would never happen. Okay, that's it for now. For more expert reaction, go to Gameology on YouTube or Facebook. You can also visit me, michaelfrancis.com. I'm also on YouTube, social media. And uh, enjoyed it. And that's it for today.